Okay, so I'll just demonstrate on Andy. Okay. For example, if we're touching, we'll just do it in the push hands model. Uh, if I had to throw my mass, of course, I'd bring my body in, probably dig under, you see this kind of thing. Trying to use my legs and waist and body and boom, move my mass into the object to push him back. This is okay in the beginning, but it's not, not the proper Tai Chi way, which should be the power moving through your body, like water running through a hose. In this part of the video, he's basically um, saying how you don't throw your mass, instead you, you, know, you send the chi through your body and you know, the water through a hose and hit people. The first issue I have with this idea is that I have not met a single legitimate internal martial art that throws a mass. Okay, so I don't know where he got this idea from. You know, he's, he's saying that as if internal martial like, like Tai Chi initially, you know, there's a force you initially want to throw your mass to throw somebody, and as you get better, then you don't throw the mass. But from my experience, you know, not just my own lineage, but other lineages that I've encountered in Beijing, and not just Tai Chi, right, Xing Yi as well, and you know, Yi Chuan, and then Wuxing Tong Bei. I've never met a single one that tells you to throw your mask in the beginning. Like, even Xing Yi, I know there's a lot of people out there doing Xing Yi that think Xing Yi is about throwing your mask. But if you ask a legitimate Xing Yi practitioner like I've met, they will tell you to not throw your mask. It's never about throwing your mask. So he's, so that point that he's making is completely moot. It's non-existent. It doesn't even stand because that's not how people do things. So, okay? The next thing that you need to realize, which is a red flag, is that when he's talking about this, he gets his own student to come and knock the martial man. Now the previous demo, he's all been doing on the martial man, and the martial man has been nothing but nice and cooperative. So why in this demo suddenly he gets his own student? You know, the moment you see that, it should be a red flag, okay? And which means, obviously I don't have 100% certainty on this, but you know, I would say the chances are he's doing stuff that requires someone to be sensitive to his force. Okay, I talked about this quite a lot in the previous videos on my grandmother streaming as well as you know, a, a portion of the second part of the magic of soul. But in case you missed this video, you don't remember, I'm gonna quickly recap. There are people that are born with sensitive uh, abilities, that they can sense a kind of force that don't affect regular person. And also some people, they can train this to, to have it. So you might not have it initially, but you train with a group of Taiji guys, and after a while you get it. And once you do, you can sense some kind of force the ideal consent. If I'm not willing to be cooperating and I'm not like you know relaxing and feeling it, it doesn't work on me, but it works on people who are willing to accept it. Which often the student, which is why often these masters do the demo on their own student but not on an outsider, which is basically what you're seeing here. So in case you don't know what it is, I'm gonna put a piece of the video of me and my Tai Chi brother. I mean my training isn't even that good, right? I've never pretend to be really good, but you can see how I can affect him with minimum to no movement like that. And this then, once I have that kind of connection, I can then add in the actual structure. Right. So you can see from that video clip that you know, it looks quite exaggerated. You know, if you just watch that video, you probably think I'm like a great chi master, okay? Because I'm doing that to a guy with minimum to no movement. But what I'm gonna tell you is if I do the same to Eric, it will not happen like that. He's not sensitive, right? My Tai Chi brother is sensitive. And that is pretty much what I believe is happening here. Although the reaction is not as exaggerated, but it's the same thing. Otherwise, why don't he you know, demonstrate that on the martial man? Okay, it's like if I go outside, do a demo in public, often I refer to all my students to let the, the, you know, the, particip well, the viewers see what is, what, what, what is, what, what's entailed, right? Because if I just ask the guy, you come up, I'll, I'll demo on you, often the audience will see you're gonna punch me in the face and they wouldn't want to, right? So you know, to ease their fear, I'll be like, okay, you know, I'm gonna, you know, ask you to stand here, I'm gonna do this to you. And then I'll show that my student, but then I will then give the chance to the bystander to come up and experience the same thing. So this is the only way to show that whatever you do works on everyone. If you show it on your students, but not on the guy interviewing you or an outsider, then most likely it doesn't work on those people. Otherwise, why not? I just bring the chi out and they go. And you know, although he says that, uh, you know, you, you, you don't throw your mask, you said you choose through your body, which is a very cool idea, a cool story that you spend. And then he's like, oh, you know, the hand guy said, yeah, he said, yeah. he's like, you can either move your hand or you can don't move your hand. But throughout the entire demo, he did not do it once where he doesn't move his hand and the guy just, just flies back. He actually moves his hand every time. 
So I'm not even sure if he can do it with someone moving the hand. And even if he can, obviously, that is a guy being sensitive. It's not, it doesn't work on people who are not sensitive. Which is probably why you know, he doesn't want to show this to Stuart Shaw, who's been pursuing him for over 10 years. But again, that's a completely different drama that I'm not going to get into in this video. So what actually happened, now keep in mind Eric is a sensitive, so he's not actually the best candidate to this demo. But, let's quickly talk about the idea. So the guy's hand is here, and my hand is here. Obviously he said you shouldn't throw your weight, which is fine. But what the guy is doing, other than being sensitive, is that he's forming a perfect structure from here all the way to his back, okay? And he's not actively resisting my force. He's not like yanking in like, like this, right? When you do that, you don't see any tension on his arm. You know? so he's just holding it in place to make it a perfect medium. And then he's facing this point and not moving. If he, if he shift, uh, not even that big, if he shift a little bit, then I will not have the desired effect, okay? So he has to make it perfectly you know, ideal for, for me because my student doesn't do that, you know, kick his ass. And, you know, I'm gonna like you know make him do 50 push-ups and trash. And then basically what happens is you get your skeletal structure, head up, tailbones down, and you go, you, you get it back. And I think he's even a bit closer, so it's easier. And then when he had the perfect structure, and he said, you know, I'm gonna send my cheek. Don't bend it. Be a perfect medium. Here's your your, your lesson on how, how to do a good demo. Close of head. So yeah, so I'm gonna be here and then. Isn't he did but bounce back. Obviously, you know, the guy sensor it will look better, but this is basically what's happening, right? I mean, he doesn't bounce as much as that guy. You know, maybe I'm not as good as Adam Messler, or maybe you know he, he's not sensitive at, at, at all. Believe whatever you want. But this is basically what happened, okay? So there's no chi coming through to hit him. It's just that you know he gave me a good structure. And so that when I'm, I'm applying force here, I'm not applying force here, but I'm applying force through here to his back, right? If if you if you just feel, this is applying force here. But now, see, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for your back, right? And then I basically use my own body like a bow, and then I project my force forward. That's the mechanic behind it, right? Obviously, his fan will not believe this, but if you're on the fence about it, then believe me, this is what actually is happening. The striking, I come in and strike, say I strike here. Yes, I'm moving my hand towards his head at speed, but really the power is here. This is reaching out to touch somebody. This is the da. So I go, what? The speed, sure. But when I touch, the fire comes out. So we combine the acceleration of the hand and the speed and mobilization of the mass with the internal mobilization of the chi to increase the power output. So using this method, is this the true meaning of like a one inch punch or a no inch punch? Is this the, the real engine that should be used? I can't talk about other styles. Everything in Tai Chi Chuan is no inch. And the next part, okay, he talks about no pun, uh, zero inch punch. So he's saying that, you know, when the guy's got arm here, he's gonna do this, bang! But this is just reaching the guy and then the force come out here. I'm not gonna hit, hit his face. You know, that's kind of bad. I don't know why he hit his students. Anyway, so, so he's saying that, you know, I'm gonna use the chest. So, yeah. so it's gonna be like, you know, he's gonna, I'm rich here, and then I, I apply force. So something like that. It's a cool theory, but here's the problem. Why do you need a zero inch punch. I'm not saying zero inch punch is fake or it's not useful, but why do you need it? There are two reasons, right? One, it gives you a tactical advantage. Two, it gives you more power or damage, right? These are the only two reasons why you would. But if you look here, it does not give you a tactical advantage. If you throw a punch and I'm doing this, right? I'm already launching this punch. Why make it difficult to, you know, to launch my hand, reach him, and then when I touch him, generate power? He's already having the distance, allowing, a, he's already allowing me to generate the distance, I could just do a regular punch. And it will knock him out if I hit him in, in the chin. Why do you need a zero inch punch? You don't need it, okay? And that's pretty much what happened with most of his application of demo, is that he's not actually showing me why he requires a zero inch punch, right? He's pretty much hinting that it's got more power because you know, there's no, from, from zero to a hundred, it takes distance. He's like, you know, it's always hundred, always hundred. But why? If you're moving your arm there, why do you need always hundred, okay? So I don't really see the point to this from a tactical perspective. I mean, anything you want to add? Do you think you know, this is also an issue? Yeah. If you really have this and this is a regular punch. 
you know, well, you know, it, 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 some ways might argue that you know you're adding more force or packing more into your punch. But momentum um, is a force too, right? I mean, no, it's it, definitely. But yeah, but you know, it, it, it's not, you know, instead of zero to hundred, right, or instead of hundred all the way, right, you're hundred and then you add ten into it. Oh. That that that's uh, that's my feeling from that. From well, the but you see, if you are borrowing momentum, then you can't be exactly touching and then yeah. Either you're gonna launch a punch from there, or you're gonna touch and, and then punch. You can't do both. Okay. Well, it, it sounds like he's doing both. So yeah, but but, but it's not possible. I don't think uh, it's possible, right? Yeah, you're I mean, gonna stop the momentum, you know, yes. by by having the contact. So, uh, and, and then let's look at power. I mean, does it give more power? This is debatable, right? It will depend on the person. You know, I mean, how much power you generate is your own personal ability. So maybe you know, if you take him compared to a very weak boxer, maybe he has more power. If you commit him to Tyson, and Tyson would kick his ass any day, right? There's no 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 doubt about that. You know, so. It's, it's debatable, you know, whether this one has more power or, or, or the other one. Um, it's a different mechanic of generating power, for sure. But I don't see a clear win on this one definitely better than that one, right? There's no inch power punch or whatever you want to call it. It's only really beneficial when, you, when it gives you a tactical advantage, okay? Which, is not, which I'm not seeing here. Let me give you an example, right? In each one, we punch like this. Okay, it's not 100% no, no inch punch, but we don't launch a punch from there. The punch is, is there. Okay. And, you know, just in case you're wondering, we're not throwing our, our mass forward, so even by punching like this, someone can't just unbalance me and lay here superior structure. Okay, I'm basically using my skeletal joint to expand to, 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 to do the punch. Okay. And why does each and people do punch like this, at least the Yao lineage? It's because that's how we in, engage someone. When, when someone is on, on guard and I'm coming to, to fight him, if he doesn't move, right, what I'm gonna often, uh, my favorite thing to do is to basically do this. And once I'm here, you see where my hand is. You see, I can't pull back and punch it. So it's important tactically, I'm able to do this, and then from here, you need to punch it. And once this punch connects, I'm gonna punch here. So my hand doesn't leave. That's what I need to punch from so-called no distance. So in this case, the, the tactic or the combat approach is what makes this punch valuable, right? If I don't fight in this kind of method, then I don't, absolutely don't need the ability to punch from no distance, okay? okay so, so this is the one reason. The other reason, the legitimate reason, is that you want to be able to keep the option open, you want to change. So that means if I want to punch from here, I can't change it once the momentum stops. I can't, if I use momentum, I can't suddenly pull the punch back. So throughout this motion, if he does something, I'm not able to adapt. Okay? That's the other reason why you don't wanna that's why other reason why you do a punch called Zhan Fa Li, which means you touch the guard and then generate power. However, if you're already launching with speed, you can't stop anyone. If you're launching a punch bam like that, you can't cut it off half halfway. So the only way to, for this to work is to not use momentum. So the actual Jiang Yifan Li is not a guy hitting you super fast, it's when he just, you know, when he just move his head forward. And, and upon all, you know, all what I do is, you know, I, I just stay forward. And until I'm certain, my punch doesn't degenerate. That's what we call in Wuxing Tong Bei, Jiang Yifan Li, right? So it's not about launching at full speed. You have to basically, you know, for example, uh, you know, uh, initial, my hand goes here, but it's soft. And the reason for that is because the moment he does something, I'm going to hit, hit him there. And because this is empty, that's why the moment I change, I can come here. And from here, I can if I leave. How I, you know, that's why I need to touch him to generate power. If I generate power from here already, then this one is too late. So this one has to be soft, and I touch it, <coughs> and I generate power. I'm always going to generate full, full power. Right? I don't want to hurt people. So that's another reason why you want to have so-called zero-inch power or Zhang Yi Fa Li. It's that you can change. Or like I was saying just now about the mid punch, right? Obviously, if the guy is not moving, well, this is not, not what will happen, but let's just say, I'm not going to launch a punch from there. And that's not Zhang Yi Fa Li. What I do is I'll stay. And as I stay, it's that so that I move up. And then there are punch. And that's Zhang Yi Fa Li because I only punch him the last moment where I'm sure I'm gonna touch him. When I touch him, then everything punches you. And you know, if you're wondering what happens if his hand is up, 
It just means I'm gonna do some, something like you know from here I'm gonna do a white 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 turn show. I'm gonna white turn show and then you know from, from here top hundred. But the reason I don't want to launch it from there is because what if my white white turn show fail? Like I did this, but you know he's like, like, like a each one guy and he overpowered me. That so can't launch this, this pun, which is why I want to punch him, but I don't do the pun. I first do a white 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 turn show and then only when I'm already in position, and suddenly the whole body go into the punch. So that's another example of why you want Jan Yifali. So while no inch power, Jan Yifali, whatever you want to call it, does have a place, an important place, I might say, in terms of martial arts, his application is not actually showing the actual benefit of it. He's basically floundering this like um, a magic power, like, you know, it's only cool if you can do no, no, no inch power. And he's comparing to, you know, each of the martial arts, like pistol working someone with the gun, into the power is like you aim the gun and you shoot, shoot him. That's not an accurate comparison because if you take the gun, for example, if I just hit him once, I'm never gonna kill him unless I'm lucky and hit him, you know, some way right, like his temple or, or, or something. But if I ever got at him and shoot him, he's gonna die. There's a fundamental difference between these two actions, and that's not the same in internal martial art versus external martial art power. Okay? The difference isn't that big from you know alive or dicks. Doing a, a full physical punch like Tyson would do. Is not going to be weaker than the so-called no inch power, okay? And you, in case you were thinking, you know, maybe no inch power, you catch a person off guard. Look, if I launch a punch from here, and then yeah, it's going to be, be prepared. So if I step in and then do a punch, you know, he's late, prepared. That's true. But like Tyson always said, right? The knockout punch is the one that you don't see. Even he knows that. So even in boxing, you try to hide your punch. You don't hide it by no inch. But you're still you know, gonna use your step work, your, bo your bo body work, and pacing to confuse him until the one he can't see. So this is exactly, again, it isn't new or special to internal martial arts. Anyone who knows how to fight knows to conceal the knockout punch. Okay? So that's nothing special. The only special thing is if you apply in a special context, which is the approach of combat, which forces you to get into this range before attacking. That's the only time when a no inch power, or what we call unified strings, or, or power generation, have an actual place in combat. So if I was using my structure to generate the power, which is okay in the beginning, it means I'd always have to be in, say we're touching, I'd always have to be in my perfect shape, and bang, I'm gonna fire, or everything's gonna be just how I want it to be, right? Yeah. No scrap that I've ever been in turned out how I wanted it to be. Even ordinary life, everything goes wrong every step of the way. Fighting is something's gone totally wrong. So then we expect it to all be perfect? Well, it's not going to happen. All right, so this part, you try to say that, you know, real Tai Chi don't need structure. But I think that is because he has a completely different definition to structure than in my system. And by my system, I don't just mean my Tai Chi system, but, you know, all the other systems that I came across, even including Xin Yi, you know, Yi Chua, Wu Xin Dong Bei, etc. At least in front of Beijing martial arts circles, the real good ones, you know, we have a different understanding to structure than him. Structure is not this, for example. It doesn't have to be this. Okay? Structure just means you have your style's principle. So in, in Tai Chi, in my language of Tai Chi, we talk about the 10 principles of Tai Chi. And if I were to do the basic Wu Ji stuff, right? Within this motion, I'm already doing the, the, the 10 principles. What that means is I don't have to have hold my hand in a specific way to have structure. What I need is the body. Okay? As long as my body is not broken, I am in structure. And as long as I'm using my skeletal force to do something, I'm using structure. Okay, structure is not only in this shape. If this is structure, and this is not structure. That's not how we understand it. Anything that I'm using my skeletal force is structure. A structure is not a fixed form. It's like a bunch of gears that can, can rotate. Because otherwise, look at, you know, chain style Tai Chi. You know, what is this chain style Tai Chi structure? It doesn't have one. I mean, each one you can say, okay, each one stand like this, so this is the structure, if you don't like this, you know, normally it's structure. But what about chain style? Right? Chain style is constantly moving, like rotating all different kinds. There's no set motion, so why? It doesn't have a structure? That's clearly wrong. Right? Chain style will be a good example to understand what an actual structure is. It's fluid. It's just as long as everything is in the correct context and contact, and it's ro ro rotating the way you want it to be, that is structure. So, for example, if you trap me up or make me uncomfortable and break my structure, okay, so my structure's broken, my shoulder nest is closed, my hips are up, you've controlled me, make yourself really stable. If I try to use structure, I'm going to be stuck, I can't do anything. You've seized me up. 
So this is how trapping works and things like that. Yes. But if I can remain song and not depend on my structure at all and release inside and use the chi, then I can move freely. And if we examine what he does, okay, let's go other ways. So the video's orientation, so the first one, the guy's like, it's like, uh, I, think, uh, so she, I think this is here, and, yeah. and this is on an elbow. He's like, you know, oh, I'm trapped, I have no structure. Well, firstly, his body is not like this. He okay, push more. If he's already like this, okay, then he has no structure because the entire center is broken. In Tai Chi, if you have your center, you are in structure, okay? It doesn't have to be here to be a structure. Second thing you need to notice, the martial man, again, very nice guy, he's not actually pushing him, he's just holding a friend. If he's actually pushing him, this is what's gonna ha happen, right? Keep pu pushing, yeah. like if you're an asset. This is what's gonna be ha happening, but he's not doing that. He's only holding him still, so he's actually not even pressurizing his so-called out of structure, okay? The first of his body is actually not broken in structure, and the guy is just making a hit. Okay, so obviously he's not making it easy, so just hold your, your, your shape. If I push back with force, then you know I'm gonna push myself out. So, so that part is fine, but he's not a real person who's gonna trap you, he's not gonna trap you here. He's gonna trap you like this and, and yank you to a wall and punch you in the face. So, so in that regard, this is actually not our structure at all, and he's actually making it easy. Anyway, so let's go back to this example, right? So he's holding his perfect structure, I have my center, my arm is trapped, sure. And then if I use my, if I fight like, you know, against him, okay, apply force, right? Yeah, I say I can't, but okay, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna use song and you ready, right? And and, and, and I use chi. And then that happens, okay? Um, so what, what's happening, again, I'm keeping this and I'm not trying to push on the point. If I push on the point, I'm gonna push myself back. But if I orient, orient my, my, my center properly, and he's pushing here, but I'm not pushing against him, I'm rising the hand and I'm using the elbow and pushing him that way. And he's not have, he doesn't have a force going that way. And if you watch the video again, the guy actually, the martial man moves that way, he doesn't move backwards. So his force is coming down here, and I'm moving it there, okay? And I'm not, okay, go again, and I'm not actively, you see this is an elbow, right? You have bit orientation. But if I use my hand, you have less control like previously, right? Yeah. It's like I'm not fighting you with this point. And obviously if I'm gonna you know, make this more efficient, okay, I'll keep holding right, I'll, I'll just take a step and use my hips. But it's supposed to be more, right? Mm. Yeah. I don't even need that rotation trick, I'm just bounce, bouncing off by, by using my hip. Obviously he's not using hip, but you know, if you're not using the hip, you can still achieve the same result. So in my understanding, this is still in structure, this is not out of structure. No. The structure is not the power. I can be in a totally broken structure, everything wrong. Uh, I'm broken, I'm broken. I swung, I used the chi, and you go. It makes no difference. So the same with other ways and the trap. So this way is the same thing. So I'm not going to repeat the demo. It's exactly the same idea. The next one is like, you know, oh, I don't have structure. My structure is broken. Again, the guy is not actually yanking him that way. If he is, he would be moving that way. Okay, so that's the first thing. And again, He's not out of structure, right? This is still in structure. You know, it's not 100% you know, in the middle, but I'm still balancing between my, my legs and I still have my, my waist bulge, I still have my back concave. I still pretty much have all the 10 principles of Tai Chi with me. And if I have those, I'm not out of structure, okay? I mean, and you can see earlier that even when I'm yanked this way, I can still come back. So I don't even know what's the point of, of saying that I have no structure here. And he did exactly the same thing where he just, use a spiral force to push him that downward through there. So it's, it's nothing special, it's just like a previous demo, but actually even easier, okay? And you know, in case you don't know, this is a, actually a move from, 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 from Ba Gua, it's called Ye Di Chang Hua, or Qing Long Tan Zha, I can't remember what, what the name actually is, but yeah, so you'll be like, you know, you'll be here, and then you'll be there, down, out, there, there, and there. So, you know, it's actually a legit move in Bagua. So how can this be out of structure? If it's out of structure, then Bagua wouldn't make use of this. And the only reason Bagua has this move, other than a tactical perspective, is because while you're doing this whole thing, you are not jeopardized, okay? If I go through here, and he tried to, you know, yank my, body, my arms, to, 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 what, like push against it, right? Because of my spiral force, I can still go, go, go through. He can't stop that force. If this is a, a structural weakness, then Bagua would remove this move from 
a system a long time ago, all right? Any shape you put me in, you say you, cross me. Okay, I'm in real trouble. If yes. I try to use structure, it's not going to work. So I don't, I use the chi and I saw. <laughs> okay, so the next one, uh, so he's like, you grab this wrist, you grab that wrist. So he's like, you know, Oh, I'm out of structure, I don't have structure anymore. Again, keep in mind the body is there. If your body is in the middle, and you're doing Tai Chi, you are in structure, okay? And obviously, okay, so, so keep, keep, keep stood, right? Yeah. So if I move my wrist, it's hard, right? It's hard, because yes, you know, your, your, your shoulder is kind of compromising a bad angle. Okay, but again, like we keep saying, don't fight the contact for it. For your, you, you extend your, your joints, like we keep saying, which in his term is, you know, putting cheese through your magical holes. So I, I say my, 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 okay, so keep, keep, keep your, your structure right, yeah. keep, keep your frame. Okay, there you go, simple, right? Look like magic, I also say, you know, I have magical power. So what essentially happened is, again, he's holding me here, I'm extending my joints, so my, my, my finger, it extends, right, this is a magic trick. And once that happens, this hand, this thing actually goes upward. So he's holding me here, but I'm going there. And he's not fighting me in this angle. He's just holding it here. So, so if, I, if, if I go back, it's hard. But okay, keep, keep going. But if I'm doing this, he doesn't have the, the support for it. And I'm, going, I'm not fighting with this wrist, I'm going to the finger outwards like that. So go again, right? So this one I'm going that way, and this one I'm just pulling back through my, my elbow. I'm not pulling here, I'm pulling with my, my elbow. And we'll do both together, okay, hold, hold it tight, right? Yep. And then I can push them out. Whoa. So it's simple as that. No, no magic, no chi, skeletal structure, or can be accomplished. But getting struck is part of fighting. So before we ask about the iron robe, how it works, uh, I'm old and lazy, so I'll just let you try on one of my students, okay? okay. Now, don't hold back, punch with everything you have. You're a trained martial artist, try to fold him in half. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come. All right, so the other part of the video, he trying to say that, you know, they don't train iron shirt or conditioning training in Tai Chi, but because a fight is chaotic, you might get punched. So through Song, Qi, and all of that magical stuff you get from, from joining his class, you know, you can usually have iron shirt, but like a Tai Chi version of, of iron shirt. And red flag number, a red flag here again is that he didn't let the martial man try it on him. He said, you know, I'm fat and lazy to have my student. If you actually gain this through doing Tai Chi and not through physical conditioning, then he should have it and you have no problem letting the martial man you know, test it on and on himself. These things he's fat and lazy, meaning that he's, you know, he can't do it and his student can, then you know, that would mean you actually need to train this specifically, not just doing Tai Chi and he naturally have this. Okay? And obviously I'm not saying he might let people punch him, but when you see a demo like this, you kind of know that this is the student going extra mile to do the training and the master probably can't do it, I mean you can't, you know, don't believe me and think the master can do it, just being humble or just don't want to show off, maybe, although I don't think he's the type of person that that's humble and don't want to show off but I just don't think he can actually, you know, do it but anyway, let's move on to the students Harder Wow Um, okay, so the punches on the stomach First thing you need to notice is that the guy's got a tummy. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying against people who was a, what would you call it, a beer belly? Beer, beer belly? Beer belly. Beer belly. I have no issue with people who have it. But what you need to know is, those are basically layers of protection. Okay, I mean, okay, I'm sure he has abs underneath it. So, so abs are, just, are the solid teeth, and you have layers of fat on top of it, which cushions the block. So a person who has a, a bigger stomach will have an easier time absorbing punches than, you know, a guy like Eric, which is all skeleton. Yeah, this is going to hurt a lot. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so beer belly already removes some credibility to this so-called iron shirt. I mean, obviously you still need some practice because, you know, the skin and the nerve under the skin is still going to be sore. So you need to desensitize them to be able to take a punch here. So I'm not saying that anybody can do it, anybody with a beer belly. You need some ab analyzer, you need some sufficient fat to push in the blow, and you do need some conditioning. But it has nothing to do with any Tai Chi training. Anyone can do this without doing Tai Chi training. So there's nothing special or unique to Tai Chi. Okay, I'm not gonna punch Eric, but he doesn't have a beer belly, and he doesn't condition this, and I don't pay him, so um, 
you know, I'm not gonna do this to him. That my Wu Xing Tong Bei master, his head has a son. And when the son was around 18 years old or 16, I can't remember, he was traveling around, he was playing around in, in Purple Bamboo Park. And he came across a guy called uh, Pang Chen. Pang Chen, you know, if you're around the area, you know, it's quite well known locally, or, or, or actually infinite, right? He's got a very bad reputation. He's really huge. Right? He's like freaking this big, and I'm not exaggerating. That way it's called Pang Chen, it's like a fat chen. And he has huge stomach, and he often lets people punch his stomach. Because, you know, he's got a fat stomach, and he does some conditioning, and normally people are so much less weighted, they can't hurt him at all. And so here comes my master's son, who's like either 16 or 18, I can't remember. And he did one punch. And partner said, no, 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 don't. You know, he was going to do three punches. He's like, you know, punch me three, three times. After one punch, the puncher don't want him to punch again. Now, why does that happen? Because, okay, so puncher was, okay, so pretend you're a puncher, right? <laughs> Standing like this. And he was expecting a punch to go this way. So what happened is, when you punch, the moment you punch, he actually moves forward. So he ran into the punch. And that reduces the power you can de 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 deliver. Also, you know, when you punch, he can time that, that strike, okay? But what my master son did was, he stepped forward, and he thought that this is going to be the punch. So he already extended. And then my master son punched him sideways through there. <clears throat> so, so, so he was thinking the punch would be here, but he went like that. And the force went right through his stomach. And he instantly had to sit down. What this shows you, again, I'm not saying that you know, this is going to happen to this guy as well, because I haven't met him in person. I said this again. It's not it's taught against him, but this is just a general knowledge that I find you might, be, you might find useful, is that the timing of the punch and the angle matters. If he's getting a full punch and punching him sideways, he's not going to have the same resistance than if I'm punching this way. Okay? Which is why, if you play by the rules, it's easier for the guy to, to resist the punch. If I don't play by the rules, it's harder. Next point, okay? Stomach is the place that people like to demonstrate because it's easier. Like I said, there's a lot of fat, that's important. However, when do you actually see skilled fighter punch the stomach? Almost never, okay? Uh, if you think about boxing body shot, it's actually to the ribs, okay? They, they don't punch here. Maybe sometimes when, when this side is covered, they punch the, the stomach. But the idea is to actually go for the rib shot or the liver shot, all right? And, and, and if they if they go through here, like, like no. If, if the, and this one will try to go for the chin. So the stomach is only a diversion. They're not trying to knock anybody out from the stomach. So this is not actually a crucial area. And secondly, if I'm going to punch somewhere around here, you see the ribs, ribs, including liver, or some other places, right? Like in each, right? If I'm going to do you know, a side punch in each, I'm not going to punch the stomach, I'm going to go from the solar places downwards, like, like that. And this hurts, right? Yeah. Even just placing the first thing. Yeah. And there's no way to condition this piece of hope. This is just the way our body is, is, is strong. There's just no protection here. And if not there, I'll be punching the face. Okay? The stomach is not even important. I don't see why you need to condition your stomach. It doesn't prove anything. Right? Any decent external martial artist is going to punch the face. If you can t let your chin take 10 punches and you don't get KO'd, that's really good. I'll give you my utmost respect. Okay? If you don't take a punch in your chin, it frankly don't matter at all where else you can take a punch. And like I said, in internal style, don't always punch the face, but when they go for the body, they use that kind of penetrating force and they hit solar plexus, ribs, or, or chin from the other way around. They don't punch the stomach, okay? Not unless they're trying to be friendly, in which case, it doesn't prove anything. Can you try like a Thai kick or something? Because, you know, belly's not everything, the whole body's a target. And then the guy then says, you know, no fight is, is, is you know, is, is fake, so you, can, you know, it goes chaotic, you can attack anywhere, and then the other guy to do a Muay Thai kick. Well, that theory is good, but, you know, like I just said, Chen, so the places, groups, these are places that people would, would attack. You can't say, hit him in the stomach, kick him on the thigh, and that covers everything. That's really ridiculous. Those are two places that are the least vulnerable to attacks. Okay, and then back to, and now to the Chen, so you keep your leg here. So what you do you keep an eye out for the chin for, from the shin, no, sorry, side. The side or the, the multi kick to the side, right? When you keep an eye out here, the enemy kicks, his side moves outwards like this. 
So again, he's running into the, the, the kick. He's not passively. If you just stand passively, you're going to receive maximum force. But if I'm kicking and you run into me, then you're actually damaging my leg. And because you're generating momentum, you are not passively receiving the force. Right? It's just like if you have two cars. If your car is standing slow, a car rams you, you're going to move back a lot. If two cars hit together, they're going to move back less. So that's what's happening here. You know, he's actually creating another force to hit my leg while I'm kicking him. So that's how he's able to resist the kick and hurt the guy's leg in, in, in the same time. A legitimate technique, right? This is a way to condition your spot against multi kick. But it's not Tai Chi, and you don't need internal power or Chi or Song or anything else for this to work. You know, kickboxers, MMA guys, everyone who does combat sports knows this practice and they practice this. So, so far the stomach and the, and the thigh are not, has zero relation to his Tai Chi and his Chi power. These are just simple body conditioning that any legit external martial art would, act, would also do. Okay? So I'm not saying these are not legit, but they don't actually prove his ideology of doing Tai Chi and having this effect. I mean, if you want to prove that, then don't ram into the guy. Okay? Or I got punch in the chin and dissipate the power. Or punching the ribs, the throat, you know, anywhere that's not the stomach and the thigh, essentially. All right? Anything you want to add here? No. So, last thing I want to say, um, I want to reinforce that I'm not saying I'm better than him. Okay, I haven't met him, so I don't know. And I don't believe he's utterly fraud like some of my friends do. I think he has some skill, but he severely misrepresents himself and he claims. To have magic one, he's actually doing a magic trick. Okay, obviously, it does take years of practice. You can't just learn this trick and apply immediately. But nonetheless, it's not some mystical chi power. It's just body mechanics through skeletal force, extending of joints, all of that which I've already talked about in the four fundamental forces and the secret behind Tai Chi. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can check them out to give you a better understanding on how I'm able to replicate these demos. And lastly, I want to say, in my Tai Chi lineage, we are not as complicated. We never do demos like, like this. I've never seen a master do them, and I, I don't do them myself. Right? In our lineage, we are quite simple. We believe Tai Chi is much simpler than all of these tricks. We believe that all you need to do is destabilize the guy's balance when he's attacking you and then hitting really hard. That's the only two things that really matters. Destabilize the guy and then deal pain. Everything else is not important. Okay? So we have a much simpler view in Tai Chi. Everything we train, it's an absorbing impact, breaking structure, and hit as hard as you possibly can. Anything else is extra and will just you know, slow you down. Not physically, but you know, mentally. So I hope this episode has been making sense. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe on my YouTube channel. And if you can support me on Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. And now, as always, I always greatly appreciate all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for supporting me through the pandemic. I and mean, it's quite hard for you guys. It's hard for everyone living through this pandemic. And for you guys to still supporting me through this crisis, it's really nice. So I greatly appreciate you guys. And I'll give a shout out to Angelo, uh, my new Patreon supporter for the family. Any questions, you know, or suggestions for future content, feel free to message me and I'll definitely try my best. And lastly, I'd like to say, if you enjoy my videos, please share them. I personally spend most of my days training and then you know some work and then maybe you know figure out what I'm gonna do in my next video. So I don't really spend time on social media, okay? Forums, you know, Facebook, I suddenly go on to. So if you enjoyed this video, um, please share them to Reddit, you know, Facebook, wherever, so that more people can you know can see my videos and get hold of at least my version of the truth and have a better understanding on the internal work of Chinese martial art. So if you find any of my videos useful, please share them and let more people know about it. In the future, what we want to do is to make the Chinese moral community real again. We can get rid of all the fraud and misrepresentations so everyone can see exactly what they're signing up for, how to get to what they want, and what actually works. Anything you want to add? Why does Trump can't get into the White House anyway? Because he's a retard. Because, uh, because it's for Biden. That, that's, <laughs> cold, that's for the American brothers out there, man. <laughs>
Dude, that is cold. Yeah, that is not cold, and my dad told me that. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you my, think- My you, point is, it's a bad joke, okay? <laughs> you think I need to grow up, right? Yes, <laughs> somebody else needs to grow up. Do not say those to you. That yeah. else it will not work out. It's freaking awesome, alright? So, so that's all. <sighs> you, you hopeless now. What? <laughs> Stop me, my day. Okay. Alright, so thanks for watching Fresh Marshall channel, and I'll see you next time. Seriously? Freaking epic.